Let S be the two by two matrix that reflects every vector across any line L through the origin. What is the range of S? The range of S is the same as the range of the transformation or image of the transformation, which is a set of all possible output vectors. Let's first take a look at this geometrically and let's assume the line through the origin is a line y equals x. The line y equals x is graphed here in black. Let's also assume the blue vectors are the input vectors in R2 and the red vectors are the images of the blue vectors under the transformation or we can say the red vectors are the output vectors. So for example, if the input vector is the vector 5, 7 here in blue, the output vector after being reflected across the line y equals x is the vector 7, 5 graphed here in red. If the input vector is the vector negative 5, 0 along the negative x-axis, after the reflection, the output vector or the image of the blue vector under the transformation is the vector 0, negative 5 graphed here in red. And then finally, if the input vector is the vector 4, negative 2 here in blue, the corresponding output vector is the vector negative 2, 4 graphed here in red. So again, we're looking for the set of all possible output vectors under this transformation. Well, every vector in R2 that's an input vector will have a corresponding output vector that's also in R2, and therefore the range of S, or the image of the transformation, is all vectors X in R2. Another way to think of this would be to think of all the vectors in R2 below the line after the transformation will be above the line, and every vector above the line in R2 before the transformation would be a vector below the line in R2. Either way, the range of S, or the image of T, would be all vectors X in R2. And the range of S, as well as the image of the transformation, is also equivalent to the column space of matrix A, where matrix A is a transformation matrix. So let's also take a moment and find the transformation matrix for our transformation, of a reflection across the line y equals x. If the input vector is the vector x, y, then the output vector is the vector y, x. We can determine the transformation matrix by determining the transformations of the standard basis vectors, or the vectors e1 and e2 in R2. The transformation of e1 will give us the first column, and the transformation of e2 will give us the second column. So starting with the vector e1, or the vector 1, 0, if we reflect this across the line y equals x, then the corresponding output vector is the vector 0, 1. 0, 1 is the first column of the transformation matrix. The second column is a transformation of E2, or the transformation of the vector 1, 0. If the vector 1, 0 is reflected across the line y equals x, the output vector, or the image, is going to be the vector 1, 0. 1, 0 is the second column of the transformation matrix. Notice how the two columns are still the standard basis vectors, just in a different order, and therefore we know they are linearly independent, and the span of these two vectors will give us the column space of matrix A, which is also equal to the range of S, or the image of T. And we know the span of the standard basis vectors, 0, 1, and 1, 0 in R2, will give us all of R2, which is another reason why the range is all vectors X in R2. I hope you found this helpful.